The Church of England has recently published pastoral principles that are helping us have a better conversation when it comes to issues around sexuality and identity. Um, LNF resources are helping that conversation to be better informed. But neither of those resources is going to be able to sort of cover up the fact that we profoundly disagree on these issues and that we need to be open and honest about that. It's really hard to talk about this sort of deep level of difference between Christians because it really hurts. However, we have to be really honest, don't we, that this, this particular issue goes to the very heart of what we believe. Not because um, particularly of what people are doing in their bedrooms, but because of what it says about God. These are not questions that you can simply uh, agree to disagree about. If you and I disagree about what the Bible says is good and what can receive, as it were, the affirmation of God and what isn't, if we disagree about that, we actually have a fundamental problem. Our gospel is a gospel of redemption. Sinners redeemed from their sin, forgiven of their guilt, a new life begins, and it's a gospel of recreation. So our gospel is about how Christ frees us and then remakes us to fulfill divine intentions. And those divine intentions cover the area of sexuality and marriage. It's part of the corpus of belief. This is intrinsically about our humanity, um, how we as the church are the bride of Christ and, and Jesus is the bridegroom, all that, that that represents. It's about who intrinsically who we are and our identity and how that is lived out. The Global South Fellowship of Anglican Churches sees itself as part of the communion and gives great uh, respect and priority of place to the Church of England. So whatever happens in the Church of England is going to have very serious ramifications for the communion. When the, uh, the Global Church or the Global Anglican Church values or sees itself as an intercultural worshipping community, and we, worship, we want to worship Jesus together, then I think the communion is very strong and, and prospers the gospel in that sense. But the moment we begin to break away from those values that hold us together, the moment we begin to think that the Word of God is no longer the standard that we should maintain, the moment we begin to sort of blur those lines, then our fellowship you know, is impaired and the gospel suffers. Whatever happens in the Church of England, for example, if it changes its canon law, then that is going to jeopardize the whole interrelationship. However, the communion goes beyond the Church of England. In the grace of God, it's collectively owned. So the Global South has no intention to break away from the Anglican communion. Rather, we might see it as a section of the house that is being fireproofed because there's a subtle fire or there is a wildfire. In the New Testament, the church, is there is disagreement allowed on certain areas. And on the question of sexual ethics, uh, there is no latitude, there is no uh, area in which this is regarded as something that um, is called adiaphora or indifferent uh, in, in the New Testament. And therefore, I don't believe we are at liberty to simply rewrite scripture and, and, and introduce uh, in, into the life of the church now areas in which the early church and the apostles were very clear as to what the Lord's teaching was. We can't agree to disagree on these foundational issues of sexuality and Christian living because Jesus says they're issues of eternal significance. And therefore, if we imply that somehow there's a range of different things you can believe and live, it doesn't really matter, you find your own way, that's fundamentally dishonest to the teachings of Jesus. His teaching tells us this is a matter of primary importance. <laughs>